Hello there fellow cake friends and welcome to this week's tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to make abstract wafer paper flowers which are super fun and easy because you can't really get them wrong. They have an airy and ethereal look almost like little butterflies dancing around your cake. As always there will be links in the description box below for all of the tools and ingredients you will need to make this cake. If you are new here please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and without further delay grab your wafer paper and let's get to the tutorial. You will start with a few sheets of wafer paper and I'm going to put the one that I use in the description box below so you can check out the thickness that I have and the rest of the tools and ingredients that I'm going to be using throughout will be there as well. So you'll start by cutting strips of wafer paper in different sizes because we want to make a bunch of different sized petals. We want these abstract petals to all look different and have different movements so we'll start with the size in order to achieve that. So these ones are my small and medium sized petals and I'm not going to show you but I did cut a bunch of large petals as well. So the way that we make petals out of these strips is just grab two together and then I cut approximate squares just using regular scissors that are nice and sharp. And I do like to only do two at a time so that the paper doesn't start slipping and sliding, which it already does a little bit when you're doing two, but it's not too bad. And any excess pieces like the piece I just cut off, just put aside and we'll use it later. So I'm gonna cut a teardrop shape with these squares that I've made. So the pointy end will be the base of their teardrop and then you'll just cut a rounded end on the other side to make a rough teardrop shape. It definitely does not have to be perfect. So I'm doing this two or three at a time so that it doesn't take forever to cut all of your petals. And I think I went through maybe 10 sheets of wafer paper in total for this entire project. So here are some of the smaller ones. I'm going to repeat the exact same process by cutting the strips into smaller squares. Just make them approximately the same size as best you can. These smaller petals are perfect for the center of medium or small flowers, as well as making kind of little buds and gestural pieces to use on your cake. So again, I am using the one pointed end as the base of the teardrop and then cutting just a gentle circle on the other side to round it out. Comment below and tell me if you like these or more classic sugar flowers more. I love them both for different kind of occasions. These ones are really light and airy and gestural, but I think both have beautiful applications. I would love to hear your thoughts on how you'd use both of them in the comments below. So now I'm cutting leaves. I'm taking two wider strips of paper and cutting just as I did for my palm leaf tutorial, which I will link to in the top right corner of this video. These are really simple to make. You just have to be cutting two rounded edges going away from each other and it'll make an elongated almond shape, which is the perfect shape for just a simple leaf. Now we'll make some wafer paper glue, which is super simple, but a really important thing to have right in this tutorial, just so that you can stick the petals on securely to the wire. I've added a couple tablespoons of water to this microwave safe silicone cup and the amount isn't exact but I'm just going to be stirring the wafer paper in until it looks like if you added any more it wouldn't be able to saturate it properly. So I'm basically just poking down the wafer paper into the water and adding more until I think it's going to be the right amount which you can always adjust later with more wafer paper or more water. So this looks good to me as soon as all the paper is a little bit saturated in that water. I'm going to throw it in the microwave for 20 seconds and then 10 second increments after that until it's goopy and bubbling. It will also thicken as it cools, but you can see the consistency now is just coating the brush with a thin film of that wafer paper glue. To condition your wafer paper, you will use a mixture of three quarters vodka and one quarter water. 
I also have a piece of bumpy foam, which is great for adding texture and movement to your petals as they're drying and a clean brush so that my petals don't get colored by any previous colors I may have had. So I am dunking my clean brush into the water vodka mixture and wiping off any excess just in a dry well of the palette. Then I will brush on the edges of the petal first and then go into the center and brush all over. You definitely don't want to dissolve the petals by adding too much moisture at the beginning. You can always add a little bit more later if you find them cracking or you're not able to bend them as you'd like. So take your first petal and when it's starting to soften up, you can begin to manipulate it. So I'm just bending back the corners here and in a second I'm going to grab a toothpick so that this makes the process a lot easier. So I'm bending it back just like you would for a rose petal or any other kind of petal that has damaged edges. I'm then cupping it a little bit in my fingers and I'm going to pinch the base just to help give it more texture and more depth. And then I'll just press that right into my bumpy foam and allow that to dry. On to the next petal. I'm going to do something a little bit different with every single one. So this one I'm curling some of the petal inwards. And then again I'm pinching the base to give it a little pleat and pressing that right into the bumpy foam. And onto my last petal. This one got a little bit dry as I was working so I'm just re-moistening that again. And I will bend that into the cup shape with a little pleat at the bottom. And just leaving that one like that. So onto a couple of the medium petals. Again, I start with the edges to saturate them and then move on to the center and brush the entire petal with the water and vodka mixture. I'm kind of massaging the mixture into the petal a little bit to help it soften faster. And I'll bend some of the petal backwards and some forward and give that a little pleat as well. You want them all to look a little bit different and be interesting and abstract. We're not trying to fit a mold or anything here. We're not veining these and making them perfect. This is, it's really supposed to be about the movement and the gesture of each petal. These are great flowers to make if you don't want to feel boxed in by the botanically correct, perfect aspects of creating sugar flowers, which can be kind of stifling sometimes. So I love doing things like this that lets my creativity flow and just allows me so much more creative freedom. It's great to be able to mix it up between these two. So again, moistening my petals and making sure that they are nice and pliable. These ones are a little bit more moist than the other ones. So you'll see when I'm doing my final assembly, they do tend to dry slightly differently. These ones have kind of a more curled edge, a little bit more imperfections. Whereas if you don't moisten them as much, they keep a little bit more flatness to them. Just be careful when you are adding more water because it will make it a bit more sticky. So you just have to be gentle. And I'm going to be drying these ones in an outward convex shape. So these will be perfect petals for the very outside of my little abstract blossoms. And I'm giving these little pinches as well, just like a rose petal. Um, like how I did with the spray rose tutorial that I showed you guys before. And bending that outwards and I'm going to dry it in the same convex shape as the other. So now on to the large petals, which are the last size petals we're making. These ones will need a little bit more saturation than the previous ones just because of their size. So I am massaging that moisture in and then giving it some interesting texture. So I'm bending it and pinching it and like just have as much fun as you want with these. There's seriously no wrong way to do it. 
So I'm gonna pinch these at the base. It gives it a really nice shape as it dries. And just let that dry like that. And I'll show you one more. This one I will curl a little bit inwards and that side outwards and give that like a twist and a pinch and then I will dry that in the opposite way of the others. Now onto the leaves. So we are going to moisten those just as we did before. You don't have to add too much water to these because really all we're gonna do is fold them so that they have a center crease or a vein. And then we are going to maybe twist them and give them a little extra movement and then allow them to dry. This one I left pretty flat. I didn't add too much texture to it, but I will show you a couple where I twist one end to just add extra movement. And make sure when you're folding these in half, you are folding away from the side you just brushed or else you have the potential of the leaf just sticking to itself when you try and fold it in half to create that center vein. So I gave that a twist and then when I'm happy with it, I will just let it dry. And also with the leaves, just as with the petals, the more water you add on the edges, the more curled and textured it gets as it dries. So keep that in mind as you're making your leaves. Don't oversaturate them to begin with, but if you do wanna add a little bit more texture, once it's in the bumpy foam, sometimes I'll just brush a little bit extra water on one side or on both sides, depending on what I'm feeling. That will add a little extra interest when it dries. So I will allow all the petals and the leaves to dry just for maybe half an hour or so. As you work, you can begin assembling them right after. To assemble my flowers, I will be using 24 gauge white wires. You can use a 26 gauge for small blossoms, but for larger ones, 24 is a more secure feel. So you will start by cutting those wires into thirds. The other thing you will need for this section is a little piece of styrofoam. Sometimes I like to assemble the flowers on the styrofoam or insert it into the styrofoam and sometimes I will just do it in my hand. So this is the texture of the gum glue. Once it's had time to cool, it's nice and sticky. And I'm brushing just a little bit onto the tip of one of those dried petals. You wanna make sure that it is sticky, but not wet. Otherwise it will start melting the petals and then they'll start flopping over. And we definitely don't want that. So just make sure it's only moist and not wet. You'll need to press and hold the petal for about five seconds in order for it to stick properly to the paper covered wire. So grab another petal, and this was not the first petal I grabbed. I probably went through three or four just to decide which was the perfect next petal to add. And I'm just putting a little dab of glue on that and then sticking it onto the opposite side so that those two petals are sandwiching the wire between them. So you could just use the flower as is, just with these two petals. I did make a bunch of these and they're great as almost little buds or blossoms uh, that look like they're just starting to bloom. But I am gonna add one more petal onto this. As you can see, the movement is going in a left direction. So I'm looking for one more petal to add movement that way. And this one I think looks perfect. So I will stick that right on with the same glue and give it a firm press. Once it's stuck on, you can manipulate them slightly. It should be a bit pliable because it just had that wafer paper glue that has a little bit of moisture in it. So I'm very happy with this one. I will allow it to dry. And I will show you one more of this medium size blossom. I'm gonna start exactly the same way with just one petal in the center giving it a firm press. 
And then I will look for my next petal. Add a touch of glue to that and then I'm going to sandwich it, sandwich the wire just as I did before. And with this one, I'm starting with a small petal in the center and then using medium petals on the outer layers to make a slightly larger flower. I like to let the petals guide the movement of each of the flowers. You'll see the movement the flower is taking on as you start to create it, so I just continue with it. I do like to keep all the petals in the same size range as I'm creating each flower. And each one I would say can have between two and seven or eight petals. There are really no rules, just keep the petals having their own movement as you fill out the flower. I try not to have petals too evenly spaced around because then it'll start looking kind of stiff and mechanical. You want it to look organic, like something that could be found in nature. So I am gluing on this petal that you can see has a tear in it and I really like to add tears and imperfections as I go. I mean just as I would on a sugar flower but you can really have fun with this. Just go with the flow and let your creativity run wild. This is the time to do that. So this flower definitely has a movement going in one direction so I'm finding one more petal to add just to accentuate that. So I like this one here. And I'll just add that little dab of glue and glue that right underneath. And I will, I opened that petal up just a tiny bit because it still had some malleability to it. Here are my first set of completed blossoms. You can see some smaller and some larger ones and they all have different movements and they're pretty quick to put together. So I did make a bunch of these for the cake last week. And now we are moving on to the large petals. So you'll begin just as you did before, painting some wafer glue onto the tip and then giving that a really firm press onto the wire. Since these petals are slightly bigger than before, they will be a little more top heavy, so just really make sure that each of them is stuck down properly and go back and restick it if you find that it's falling down or it keeps falling off. You definitely want these to be secured. So I will take my second petal and again sandwich that wire between these two and moving on to my third just one that opens up a little bit more because these two first petals are very upright. So you always want to have variation in the, in the shapes that you're creating. So that one has a really nice curl backwards. I love that. And if you're feeling it's getting a bit too clunky in your hands, just go ahead and stick that into the styrofoam as you work for a little bit. It'll make it a lot easier, especially with these larger flowers. And if there are any dry spots that aren't quite sticking, don't be afraid to add a tiny bit of wafer paper glue and re-stick those pieces on. So the way I'm choosing petals for these flowers is the center ones I want to be a little bit more upright and maybe even cupping in towards one another. And then as I work my way outwards to, on the flower, I want those petals to be bending backwards and look like they're opening up and blossoming. Again, use as many petals or as few as you'd like. For these larger ones, I like to use three to seven total. And you can even keep aside a few medium petals for the center of these larger flowers. It's sometimes nice to have a bit of variance that looks almost like maybe you've lost some petals in the process and that the flowers are a bit aged. Here are all of my completed flowers. So you can see how many I've made for that large 
three-tier cake that I assembled them onto. And now we are going onto the leaves and we're starting with 26 gauge wires. So I'm just grabbing a bunch here and I'm gonna cut these into thirds. I don't wanna use anything longer than one third of a wire so that the leaves don't get too long and gangly. For these leaves, we're going to be doing a very similar technique to what we did with the flowers as well as the palm leaf tutorial that I did before with the wafer paper. So I'm just measuring it to see where I want to place the wire and then putting a dab of wafer paper glue at the very tip and giving that a really firm press. As you work, don't be afraid to bend and manipulate the wire. This will make it look more realistic and give it a lot more movement on your final arranged cake. For these leaf arrangements, I usually use between two and four leaves because I do like to keep them a little more compact. Even though they're going to be adding a lot of gestural movement to the overall cake, I don't want them to be kind of loose and uh, too wild. And as this arrangement comes together, you can see how fun and almost windswept this little leaf arrangement looks. And this is exactly what you want. You want each to look organic and just totally natural as if it just came from your garden. I'm starting my second leaf arrangement here and this one is going to have four leaves in total. So I don't always stick with the first leaf that I pick. Sometimes it just doesn't look right. So I just go ahead and pick a different one. And when I am attaching these on, I try and just attach the very, very tip. I don't want too much of the leaf kind of overlapping the wire. It will make it look a lot more realistic if you can just get as, as little as possible there. I will continue assembling until I've made it through all of my leaves, but you can see these two stems in the meantime, they have so much movement and so much character to them. And this will just help add a lot of gesture to your final arrangement on the cake. I would let all of the leaves and flowers dry for at least an hour, but I did leave these guys overnight before I transported them to the venue. And I do like adding these flowers on at the venue just to be safe, uh, just in case there's any jiggling or wiggling in the car. We want to prevent these from moving too much. So here is the final product. All of the flowers and leaves have been arranged onto this wedding cake. And I really love this windswept and airy ethereal feel that these flowers give. I had so much fun with this new technique and I hope you enjoy it as well. Thank you for watching this abstract wafer paper flower tutorial and I hope you give this technique a try. If you do, please don't forget to tag me on social media at Fine Spun Cakes with two S's everywhere. And if you're looking for the wafer paper or any of the other tools that I used during this video, you can find them all in the description box below. Before you head out, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It helps out a lot and I will see you next time.